A new alarming legislation jeopardizes the freedoms of Christian parents, exposing them to potential oppressions. We delve deep into the concerning aspects of this law, which has the potential to impact families across the nation. In the video, we will discuss how the biblical prophecy in 2 Timothy 3 relates to the persecution of Christians. Despite its widespread presence, many Christians in the United States are reluctant to acknowledge this threat. Society is entering an era of moral decay, challenging Christian predominance. Such a scenario arises from Christians' reluctance to remain faithful to the teachings of the gospel, opting to satisfy human expectations rather than divine ones. Scriptures warn about the presence of nominal Christians in the church who promote an altered version of the gospel. Numerous congregations under the influence of these impostors have strayed from the path, focusing more on attracting people than obeying God. Recently, we have seen the government supporting this hostility against the church. This new episode of individual and collective persecution by the government marks a challenging period for Christians. The California Assembly Judiciary Committee has approved the TGI bill proposal aimed at protecting LGBTQ plus youth and encouraging parents to recognize their children's gender identity. Sponsored by Representative Lori D. Wilson, this legislative proposal initially focused on incorporating parents' views on gender identity into custody disputes. However, the AB 957 bill was expanded to highlight the importance of parental recognition of gender identity in a child's healthy development. The AB 957 bill underscores the crucial role of parents in supporting the gender identity of their TGI, transgender and gender non-conforming children, considering it a cornerstone for child protection and well-being. The bill enables judges to consider parents' opinions on gender identity in custody and visitation decisions. Additionally, it is essential for courts to carefully assess whether support for the child's gender identity aligns with their best interests especially in cases where one parent disagrees with legally changing the child's name to align with their gender identity. Regarding the TGI bill in California, various criticisms and concerns have arisen. Critics mention the lack of clarification on issues such as the child's age and the impact on their mental health. During hearings, child mental health has been a topic of significant focus. Currently, the bill awaits review and voting in the state Senate with potential amendments being discussed to refine the Transgender and Gender Non-Conforming Youth Empowerment Act. This bill directly affects the Christian community in the current social environment, where they face new challenges. Progressive activist groups may interpret adherence to biblical teachings as abuse, creating a situation where the Christian faith can be a reason to remove children from their families. This dynamic increases persecution against Christians, promoting social isolation and association with extremism and intolerance. The current landscape of educational institutions, including schools and universities, is marked by intense debate over the inclusion of different perspectives and ideologies in the curriculum. This inclusion is seen by some as a necessary step towards a more comprehensive and representative education of society's diversity. On the other hand, there are concerns about how this might impact family traditions and values, especially in families with strong religious convictions. Education has become a battleground for freedom of expression and the preservation of cultural and religious values. While schools seek to incorporate a variety of viewpoints, many parents worry about the potential conflict between what is taught in schools and what is practiced at home. This is a particularly sensitive issue in regions like California, where educational legislation often reflects a more progressive approach. Furthermore, interstate mobility and the influence of state policies on national education are topics of great interest. Decisions made in one state can have a cascading effect, influencing educational policies in other regions. This raises questions about uniformity and diversity in educational practices across the country. In this context, families and communities are facing the challenge of balancing exposure to new ideas and concepts with the preservation of their traditional beliefs and values. The discussion around education reflects a broader aspect of ongoing cultural and social changes, highlighting the need for dialogue and mutual understanding among different perspectives. The legislative proposal presents uncertainty in its terminology regarding opposition potentially granting excessive power to liberal entities, 
often at odds with conservative family values. This lack of clarity can result in an exaggerated influence of these groups in domestic decisions. Legislator Scott Weiner has been active in promoting gender identity policies for minors. He has advanced legislation designating California as a refuge for young people seeking these treatments, with the endorsement of Governor Newsom. This legislation supports significant medical procedures in children, funded with taxpayer resources. The need for awareness and immediate action is critical. The repercussions of these policies extend beyond local borders. Citizens must understand the seriousness of this issue and take steps to safeguard their principles, families, and children. This may involve activism, political engagement, or even reconsideration of their place of residence as a way to resist the erosion of traditional values that are at risk. Government intrusion into family decisions and children's lives is a matter of great concern, especially when such decisions can be life-changing. Ali Beth Stuckey highlights the disregard of politicians and authorities for the well-being of children. The idea of children being removed from their families and placed in systems that do not prioritize their interests is alarming, demonstrating governmental negligence in terms of emotional bonds and parental care. Governmental management of children often appears distant and lacking in deep understanding, a stark contrast to the depth and authenticity of parental care. While parents intimately know every smile, tear, and quirk of their children, politicians often lack this emotional connection, which can lead to state policies that do not reflect the necessary empathy, especially in tragic circumstances involving children. Parents, in their unwavering commitment to their children, endure sleepless nights and dedicate Herculean efforts to ensure their well-being. However, when the state intervenes, it often seems to usurp parental rights, leaving families in a state of vulnerability. In situations where children are placed in systems that do not seem to have their best interests at heart, parents suffer immensely while the politicians behind these systems rarely show compassion or remorse. A concerning issue arises with the fear that in California, children may be removed from Christian homes on allegations of abuse due to faith practices. This puts Christians in a dilemma how to maintain their firm beliefs while also protecting their children from possible persecution. This potential scenario in California is alarming, as it could set a dangerous precedent in other locations. President Biden's perspective on these matters is crucial, reinforcing the need for vigilance. His belief that children are a collective responsibility of the nation suggests a prioritization of the collective over individual parental rights. The delicate issue of transgender children exemplifies the need for an approach that is careful, respectful, and filled with empathy. During a recent meeting with the Christian community, former President of the United States, Donald Trump, highlighted the relevance of Jesus Christ in the context of Christmas. He referenced the historic revelation to the shepherds in Bethlehem about the birth of Jesus, emphasizing the figure of the Savior as essential to the nation, while stating that he himself is not that Savior. During his speech, Trump addressed current issues such as the consequences of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, immigration challenges, and economic issues like inflation. He also criticized the current political administration in the U.S. Trump made a point to underline the transformative role of Jesus in history, citing how his life, death, and resurrection influenced crucial events in the United States, including the Civil War, the end of slavery, and the fight against dictatorial regimes. Furthermore, Trump shared details about his personal faith, identifying himself as a Presbyterian Protestant. He expressed satisfaction with his faith, considering it a foundation in his life, and reaffirmed that Jesus Christ is a source of strength and hope, not only in the United States, but around the world. The former president also talked about his limited understanding of Seventh-day Adventist doctrines, but emphasized his deep connection with God and his close relationship with the evangelical community. He mentioned his regular attendance at church, especially during holidays like Christmas and Easter. Trump emphasized the importance of moral conduct to avoid the need for forgiveness and discussed his active participation in the sacraments of his church. Trump highlighted the significant influence of the Bible on his life's journey, describing it as the most impactful work in his life. He expressed equal appreciation for both the Old and New Testaments mentioning his admiration for specific passages in Proverbs and 2 Corinthians 3.17. In the discussion, Trump talked about the supremacy of God, 
whom he considers the great architect of the universe. He also addressed the concept of the rapture and the vital role of Jesus in this event. The rapture, a fundamental concept in American evangelical belief, involves the idea of a future event in which Christians, both the deceased and the living, will be taken up to heaven to meet the Lord. This term comes from the Greek word harpazo, which means snatch or take with. It is a theme explored in the first epistle to the Thessalonians. The doctrine of the rapture emerged in the 1830s, differing from traditional Christian teachings, and gained popularity among fundamentalist theologians in the United States. Today, it is a widely debated topic in Christian theology, with various interpretations regarding the timing of the rapture and the nature of Christ's return. According to the view of John Nelson Darby, a 19th century theologian, the rapture would occur before a seven-year period of tribulation, followed by Christ's return and a millennium of his messianic rule. On the other hand, the post-tribulation interpretation of the rapture suggests that this event will take place after the tribulation. Jesus, during his earthly mission, promised a return to gather his followers, saying, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. These words have left uncertainty about the visible or more subtle nature of his return. Additionally, the scriptures offer different perspectives on the return of Christ. In the book of Acts, it is described that after the resurrection, Jesus was taken up to heaven before the eyes of his disciples. This crucial event serves as a model for understanding how Jesus may make his return. Angels in that scene proclaim that Jesus, who had been taken up to heaven, would return in a similar manner. This implies that his return will be a visible and open event in contrast to a secret or hidden coming. The disciples observed Jesus ascending into the heavens until a cloud covered him, a scene that symbolizes that Jesus' return will be unmistakable and public, in alignment with the essence of the historical and resurrected Jesus. For those in the Christian faith who await the rapture, an event mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, where it is believed that the faithful will be taken to heaven it is vital to be alert to the signs of the end times. Through teachings like those found in Matthew 24, Jesus provided indications of these signs, guiding his followers to recognize the proximity of such events. Christian doctrine concerning the signs of the end times also warns about the appearance of false messiahs and deceiving leaders who claim to offer solutions to the world's problems. Christians are encouraged to maintain a spirit of vigilance and discernment to avoid being deceived. Furthermore, the escalation of conflicts and wars is seen as a precursor to the imminent return of Christ, as mentioned in the book of Revelation. Many catastrophic events, such as natural disasters, pandemics, and social conflicts, are often interpreted by many in the Christian community as indicators of an era of increasing tribulations before the consummation of times. Similarly, the growing aggression against followers of Christ, especially through actions of fundamentalist groups, is seen as a sign of the approach of the end times, highlighting the possible cost of adhering steadfastly to the Christian faith. It is crucial for Christians to recognize and understand these signs as a way to prepare properly for future trials. It is advisable to avoid the temptation of determining a specific date for the rapture, focusing instead on living according to the values and teachings of their faith. In Acts 1, 7, 8, Jesus emphasized that only God knows the exact timing of the rapture, discouraging believers from making predictions. This underscores the importance of focusing on their current responsibilities and missions rather than getting lost in speculation about the future. This teaching serves as a reminder to live in the present with integrity and a deep commitment to their faith. Regarding concerns about the fate of Christians who have been cremated, the scriptures offer consolation. The promise that the dead in Christ will rise includes all the faithful, ensuring a resurrection to glorified bodies regardless of the form of burial. 1 Thessalonians 4.16, 18 vividly illustrates the return of Christ with a heavenly summons and the divine trumpet, reiterating that all who have died in Christ will rise first, ensuring that no faithful believer will be left behind. Within the context of Christian theology, there is a belief in a future event known as the rapture, in which faithful individuals will undergo an extraordinary experience. According to this faith, these followers will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. 
This concept symbolizes the complete inclusion of devotees in a profoundly significant event. The belief in God's ability to gather the bodies of the faithful, regardless of their state, whether disintegrated, submerged, or destroyed, is a central aspect of this belief. According to this faith, just as God is the creator of the universe, He has the power to restore and resurrect any body, no matter its previous condition. In the understanding of this doctrine after the rapture, Christians will undergo a judgment before the tribunal of Christ, as described in 2 Corinthians 5.10. However, this judgment is not meant to determine eternal salvation, as it is understood that followers of Christ have already secured their place in heaven through the redemption achieved by the death and resurrection of Jesus. This reinforces the belief that salvation and access to heaven are assured for the faithful. During the judgment at the tribunal of Christ, the focus is not on salvation, but rather an evaluation of the believer's actions during their earthly lives. In this judgment, rewards will be assigned based on loyalty and the impact left on earth. These rewards in turn will directly influence the positions and authorities that believers will hold during the following millennium, creating a connection between earthly actions and future roles in the heavenly kingdom. Regarding the recent legislation in California and its impact on the Christian community, we would like to invite our followers to express their opinions and thoughts. Please comment below and engage in our community for further discussions and videos on similar topics. Don't forget to subscribe for updates. Subscribe.